Hi there, this is Justin here to talk about some new features in the Cycle Analyst firmware. A lot of people are still running the preliminary 6 Cycle Analyst 3 firmware and in the last two years we've had a lot of little incremental improvements and I'd like to show them to you here. Uh, so the first and foremost is uh, people who are using the auxiliary input of their cycle analyst to adjust either a power limit or a current limit can now see on the screen what that limit is set to. So in this case on our bike we have it set for a 0 to 20 amp adjustment of the current limit. As you adjust the limit it's showing it clearly on the display. Once you stop turning the knob it will return back to the normal screen. We know we're now set to 13 amps. Um, some of the additional details are present inside the setup menu itself. So if we enter the setup menu by holding the left button, um, the overall navigation is just as it's been before. Uh, but if we want to change a value, we now have the option of using the left button in order to facilitate editing digits. So here, for instance, I'll change my speed limit. It's at 50 kilometers an hour. And say I accidentally move along and set it to 150 kilometers an hour. Previously, I'd have to save every digit to exit this in order to change the one. Now I can press and hold the left button it's going to prompt me back to the previous digit. I can set that back to zero and we're going to reduce Robbie's bike to be 32 kilometers an hour so that it's legally compliant with Canadian rules. Sorry Robbie. Okay, so now we have our, our speed of 32 kilometers an hour. Another thing you'll notice, we've always had these little arrows indicating whether there's more menu items to the left and the right, um, but you'll see also that there's dotted lines underneath it in some of these values. Uh, those dotted lines means that this speed limit is preset dependent. So if you have two or three different presets for all your settings, you can have one with a 32 kilometer an hour speed limit, another that's 40 kilometers an hour, another that's 20, and you're aware that this value is preset dependent by these dashed lines. If we look at some of the other settings, like the feedback gain, uh, there's no dashed lines under there. That means it's globally. So this value of uh, 50 gain units uh, applies to all the presets that we're in. Um, previously as well, we've now edited a value in the setup menu. If we wanted to leave the setup menu, we then have to scroll all the way out to the very last menu item, hit the last button, and now we're leaving the setup. Uh, for people that are going in there and just want to change one value, so let's go back and change Robbie's speed limit. Um, uh, we might decide 32 kilometers an hour, we're done. If you just press and hold the left button, it now exits and exits the setup menu completely. So you can quickly get back to riding your bike rather than scrolling your way out of there. Now, uh, a few other features. Uh, actually, you could back up, Robbie. Mm -hmm. um, for people who are using a pedal assist system, whether that's, in this case, we have a magnet ring pass sensor. Um, this will also apply if you have a torque sensor, either a TDCM or a ton sensor. Uh, we've made some refinements in the behavior of the pedal assist uh, operation. And you can see that in the setup menu here, um, this applies to any system. So here we have setting up our pass sensor. Notice the P and the D arrows. That's the position and the direction signals. Um, if I turn the pedals, you can see both arrows will toggle up and down as the pedals rotate, right? Um, so if you have both arrows toggling, that means you have a quadrature pedal sensor. And inside the setup menu, there's a feature that wasn't in the preliminary six, which is quadrature mode. So if you have both the P and the D arrows going up and down, you've got a two wire pedal signal. And if you enable that, instead of having just one wire pedal sensing, if you have two wire pedal sensing, then the cycle analyst is smart enough to know whether you're pedaling forwards or backwards. And if you're riding the bike in pedal assist mode and you want to immediately cut the pedal power, all you need to do is a very quick backwards pedal rotation and the uh, pedal assistance will cut out immediately. So the Cycle Analyst 3 has always had the ability to sense temperature and scale back the power, um, but you didn't really know when it was limiting your uh, power because of exceeding a temperature threshold. Uh, so in this case, let's just set a 10 degree temperature limit. Um, the, set, say from 10 to 20, so at 20 degrees there's no power whatsoever. Um, and go back to the setup menu, we now see this flashing temperature icon alternating with the battery icon. So that's telling us that the motor controller and the cycle analyst is in thermal rollback and the output current's now being scaled back because we're over our temperature limit. So one of the last features that uh, I'm most excited about here is related to regenerative braking. And we've always had this feature in the setup menu where you have a throttle output voltage. So if I go to the throttle output menu, um, 
we have a minimum output, a maximum output, and we also have a brake output voltage. So this is the voltage, the cyclonic sense of the controller when you squeeze the brakes. Um, all of the controllers that we sell here at Grin Technologies have a throttle enabled regenerative braking where if this throttle voltage is 0.8 volts or less, it does regen. And the further down it is, the more regenerative braking that you get. Um, with the new proportional regen feature that's in the, the current firmware, if you set your breakout voltage, so if I just go here to the main display screen, so from the first screen, hit the left button once for the diagnostics, I can see my input and output throttle voltages. So when I turn the throttle on, you see the throttle input going, now you see the output to the motor increasing as well. Um, if I squeeze the brake, we'll see the output voltage drops immediately to 0.5 volts, which is the same setting we had for the breakout voltage. If I squeeze the brake and then turn the throttle, we see the throttle input voltage is going up, the output voltage is going down. So if you could look over at the throttle here, Robbie. So here you see, with the cycle analyst. Uh, so here you see I squeeze the brake, the output voltage drops to 0.5 volts, and as I turn the throttle, I can then drop that all the way down to zero volts. So as I'm braking, I can increase my braking force by then twisting the throttle. Uh, this gives us the ability to modulate the region as you're going downhill. If you just want a bit of braking, you just squeeze the brake. If you want to come to a stop more aggressively, turn the throttle. So for everyone who has a cycle analyst, it's a good time now to update your firmware. These aren't groundbreaking changes, but uh, cumulatively it adds up to quite a nice improvement in the overall usage of a system with a CA3. Thank you.